This is TF uh, from Team Pumpenstein. We're here at Pro Edge Paintball, ProEdgePaintball.com. We're going to do a little bit of a tech video on the T2 today. Um, we're not going to go into it fully because um, there's some other good videos out there and so many of the components are the same for the Series 6 as they are on the T2. For instance, the regulator, exactly the same, just different milling. The grip frame is a thin frame on this. Other than that, it techs almost exactly the same. The bottom tube in front of the hammer, the valve portion, exactly the same, exact same springs. So I'm not gonna go into that today. I'm just gonna show you how to break it down after a day of play, and we'll go from there. First thing, of course, make sure that the marker has no air source on it and does not have any residual air in the gun. Take off the barrel. That's a Deadly Wind 14 inch. And we're gonna take off the, uh, the feed neck. Now, the feed neck, uh, this is open class. This is stock class. And both use 564 Allen's key screws, and you don't have to take them off all the way. A simple kind of a half turn, slide it forward, comes right off. It's really kind of cool. Now, this T2 feed neck does come in half. Excuse me, the stock class cram and jam does come in half. Um, so that's important, and I'll show you why that's a little bit important later. So I'm going to leave that kind of half screwed together. Uh, the next thing you're going to want to do is take the bolt out. Take the bolt pin out. And some people have a little bit of um, trouble getting that bolt pin out. Simply add lubrication to the pin when you're putting it back together. There's an O-ring inside the bolt that indexes on that groove um, that causes some binding there. So just add a little bit of tri-flow, some, uh, something else. I wouldn't use grease, I would use tri-flow because I don't want you to put anything in there that um, gets on the bolt and slows it down. The only thing I would add to the bolt is tri-flow. So set the bolt aside. Uh, the next bit that we're going to take off is the feed neck. You're going to need a T10 Torx screwdriver for this. Should have come in the bag. If you don't, and I would highly encourage getting um, a decent screwdriver there. Those might be available at CCM. If not, check a local paintball store or a local hardware store. Two screws here. One down this access hole here. Those are going to be Loctited from the factory. Blue. Okay, blue Loctite. They will come off a little bit of a arm strength on there. And here is the second one down the feed neck. A couple of screws there. And that whole feed neck comes, the whole body comes right off. Run a swab through that, you're clean. Here's something always to check. Your ball detent. This is a Timmy or Spider ball detent. Make sure that it looks good and that it's round on top. These will get cut sometimes or damaged and you're going to get uh, paint rolling past this ball detent into your barrel. And if you've got undersized uh, paint, it's going to roll out your barrel and, and uh, do bad things for you. So set that aside, replace it if needed. Now, the next thing that does not need to happen, but I'm going to show you here, is taking this back block off. Okay? That's going to be two torque screws as well. I wouldn't take it off often. If it just needs to get wiped down, this is basically all you need to do. Wipe it down, take out the bottom, and I'll show you that in a minute. But if you do need to, um, be careful when putting it back together. I'll talk as I take this out. That when you put it back together, it can get some bind. And you need to align that back block properly and then use blue Loctite to Loctite those screws down keep them in place. And uh, you're going to be money with that. Second screw here. And that can be a little bit difficult to get the back block off. It fits really tightly. So... What I do is I give it a couple of taps, just against the uh, thing there. Nothing hard, a couple of taps, and usually that loosens that up, and that back block will come right off. Again, we'll show you how to put that back together in a second. Now, what I like to do next, to make it look a little better, is take the frame completely off. Loosening the frame um, all the way helps you get this pump, excuse me, auto trigger arm off of the pump arms. Use the hand of Thor on that. I, I don't know my own strength, you know. I've been juicing a lot, trying to make it to the 50s. So, roiding out. A couple of screws here. Take those off all the way. There are better ways. A, a guy who goes by Muddy Taco on, online has a video where he has a little bit more of an elegant way. I, I just take the whole frame off, and therefore I'm not confused. It's easy to confuse me. Now, 
once you get that loosened up, you can take this auto trigger arm off and slide the pump and both auto trigger, or excuse me, both pump arms directly off. Then the frame comes off once that's properly loosened up. Now, the only thing I do want to mention about the frame before we go further is that there is a pin right here. I don't know if I can get that to come out. There is a pin right here that retains the auto trigger arm or cam and arm. Make sure that pin doesn't get lost. Replace it if, it, if you do lose it. And get another one from CCM. Set the grip frame aside. A couple of things here. The ASA, or what I call vertical regulator adapter, that's what they used to call it on the uh, Angel, does come off. You very rarely need to take it off. 3 16 screw comes off. There's one static O-ring. Use some hater sauce or some Dow 33. Front pump arm can come off and you can polish that. That has one static O-ring in there. Very rarely needs to come off. A little bit of Dow 33 and that will do it. 3 16 takes that off. Okay, now into the bottom tube we go. The first one you're going to need is a one quarter inch Allen key. But note this, for those of you that haven't used the gun yet, you do not need to take this vanity cap off in order to adjust the um, IVG, internal vo velocity governor. So you don't need to do it, but if you're going to take the bottom tube apart, Take the vanity cap off. That does have one small O-ring. It's replaceable. It tends to get chopped a little, so you might want to have one of those on hand. And then you use a 3 16th to take this off. Now what I do is I count how many turns I do to take off the um, IVG when I'm uh, disassembling it. And this is four turns from flush, and I can get that to happen properly. So four turns from flush. Or as two of the players on Pumpenstein say, Frush. They're Asian. I don't know why we have them on the team. Actually, I do know why. We get a discount for um, having mentally impaired people on the team from the government. So, but that's good. The next thing you're going to want to do. Go on. All right. The next thing we're going to do is uh, take out the uh, bottom hammer here. So, that's usually about three turns in. I usually count that as well when I take it out. So, one, a two. A three. And older people know what I'm referencing. Okay, now let's take a look at these hammers and this is one thing that I definitely wanted to cover. Here is a Series 6, Series 5 hammer. I know this is actually an SS25 and Series 6 prototype hammer as well. This is a standard autococker um, sniper style hammer that CCM makes with their spring. Okay, it, this spring is different in the Series 6 than it is in the T2. There's a reason for this. Take a look at the hammer length on the T2. The T2 has this shroud that is added on to make sure no dirt gets in when they did the half blocking process. So what they wanted to do is shield the dirt from getting into the bottom tube. Because of that, it's a little bit heavier, okay? Also, when they added the vanity cap, to the bottom tube, it took up a thread or two and they had less room in the bottom tube. So because of this, they've got a smaller, lighter spring and a heavier hammer. Now, advantages. Advantage, shroud that keeps out that dirt, shield that keeps out that dirt. It's also almost 50% more efficient than my Series 6, which is awesome. Disadvantage, the disadvantage with this is if this hammer, which is heavier, with a lighter mainspring, gets dirt or paint on it, well, usually paint, it um, only, it really hinders the gun's performance. It'll shoot at 250 feet per second forever. I call it the 250 syndrome. So, if you're playing and dirt gets into your gun, you go in the snake hard or whatever else, or you get paint in that bottom tube, take it out. I usually use some alcohol to clean that, leave it dry so it doesn't attract more dirt, and then put it back together. You don't need to do this with a Series 6. In fact, I lubricated the bottom uh, tube on my Series 6. I learned this from the T2. It was stumping a couple of us. And on M. Carter Brown, um, we talked it through, worked it out, and uh, I simulated it with a little bit of grease and a little bit of paint on this bolt. And uh, it was causing the 250 feet per second problem. A couple of guys at, at Huntington Beach were, were shooting 250, fighting their gun. I can't adjust it and make it work. Take the bottom hammer out, clean it, put it back together and you're going to be money. Okay. Now, 